Rahmanir Rahim. After praising Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, the one who provides, the one who sustains for each and every one of us. And after sending infinite salutations and blessings upon our master, our liege lord, Sayyidul Anbiya wal Mursaleen, Sultan Madina, Nur Sina, Ahmad Mustafa wal Mujtaba, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sallam, we shall begin. It is the duty and responsibility of every single Muslim, male and female, to love the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi wa And one of the signs of loving the Messenger of Allah is to love the Ahlul Bayt. A sign, an alamat of the love of the Rasul is love for the family of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His qadiyyaz, in his ashifa bi ta'rifi hukuk al-mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam mentions this. That there are 11 signs. How many signs? 11 signs. Yara. 11 signs. And the believer has to fulfill each and every one of these signs. And Qadi Iyad mentioned that one of these signs for the love of the Rasul is the love of the Ahlul Bayt. And Qadi Iyad was not an ordinary scholar. The A'imma of the Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'at, the scholars and the ulama of the Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'at, they based their aqaid on the Quran and the Sunnah of Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. Qadi Iyaz, Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. They have taken this sign to love the Ahlul Bayt from the Qur'an itself. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah number 33, verse number 33, the verse I recited and Qibla Shah Sahib recited in his khutbah as well. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala talks about the rank and the status of the Ahlul Bayt. Allah talks about the nobility of the Ahlul Bayt. This is mentioned in the Quran. And this is the aqeedah of the Ahli Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, Innama yuridu Allahu li yuzhiba ankum al-rijsa ahla al-bayti wa yutahhirakum tathira. And this one ayat of the Quran is the bunyad of the virtues of the Ahli al-Bayt is the foundation of the honor and the dignity of the Ahlul Bayt. This one ayat of the Quran. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala starts with the particle of hasa. Innama, kalimatul hasa. What Qibla Shah Sahib couldn't do, I will continue. Innama, kalimatul hasa. The particle of exclusivity. The particle of comprehensiveness. That Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala who is Qadeem. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala who has no beginning, who has no end. Who wal awwalu wal akhiru wal zahiru wal baqiru. Allah who has no limits, who has no boundaries. Allah is saying that we have purified the Ahlul Bayt. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has taken this responsibility. That he has cleansed the Ahlul Bayt. <coughs> He has purified the Ahlul Bayt. The question could be for what? What is it that Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has purified the Ahlul Bayt from? Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala has purified the Ahlul Bayt from all bad traits, from all impure characteristics. That the Ahlul Bayt are those who tell the truth, the Ahlul Bayt are those who spread the truth, the Ahlul Bayt are those who give their life for the sake of truth. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is saying this in this particular verse. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala uses a masdar. 
right at the end, tathira. Maful mutlaq. Yes. Master. Bab taf'il. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala uses this particular word. He's already said, wa yutahhirukum. Wa yutahhirakum. Allah tabaraka has already said that we're going to purify them. We are going to cleanse the Ahlul Bayt. Each and every member of the family of the Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sallam, Allah goes, we are going to purify them. But in order to do ta'qeed, in order to emphasize this, and in order to highlight that this is not some sort of a symbolic purification, but rather this is a physical purification, Allah wa ta'ala used a maful mutlaq and a master as well. Tathiran. And again, Allah uses a tanween. And tanween has many, many different types. And one of the types of a tanween is tanween un ta'zeem. Tanween un ta'zeem. Yes. A tanween which is used for honor and dignity. This is the third point that we learn from this ayat. Bear with me. First was what? Innama. Kalimatul Hassar, exclusivity for the Ahlul Bayt. Second is Maful Mutla, which is a master from Baab Taf'il. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is highlighting the rank and the honor of the Ahlul Bayt. That he has purified and cleansed the Ahlul Bayt. And now the third point from this one ayah. You see, it's not easy that you just pick up one translation of the Quran of us. Pirate form. Surah number three, verse number seven. It's not parrot form. You have to study the Arabic language. You have to sit at the feet of the ulama. You have to take from the blessings of your asatiza. And when you have the tools that your teacher gives you, and you have the dua and the faizan and the barakat from your teachers, then the ayat of the Quran makes sense to you. Tanween. Tanween which is used for ta'zim here. Third point Allah is highlighting in one verse that this tanween shows the honor and the dignity of the Ahlul Bayt. It shows the rank and the status of the Ahlul Bayt. Remember the Ahlul Bayt are those who are created, for, created from the clay of Rasulullah They are created from the clay of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Akib Shah Sahib mentioned the, the share of Allah Hazrat Imam Ali Sunnat, Imam Ahmad Riza Khan alayhi rahmat. The teri nasle paak me hai, bacha bacha noor ka. Tu hai aine noor, tera sab garana noor. The Ya Rasulullah, Ya Habib Allah, you are the foundation of light. Laqad jaakum min Allahi noor wa kitabun mubi. That we did not send you except as a light. Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 15. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ نُورٌ That Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala sent you as a nur, Ya Rasulullah. And Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam himself said, إِنَّهُمْ إِطْرَتِي خُلِقُوا مِنْ تِينِي أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام. Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam's blessed alfaz. I remember the words of Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam are not from his own desires. The words of Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam are not from his own khawashat. وَمَا يَنْتِكُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوْهَىٰ That whatever the Rasul says, whatever the Rasul does, he does because he has been divinely inspired by Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala. Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam is saying that the family of the, uh, the Rasul, the Ahlul Bayt, the members of the household of the Messenger of Allah, they are created from the same clay as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this tanween is a tanween of ta'zeem. That just as we honor the Rasul, just as we love the Rasul, then we should honor and love the Ahlul Bayt as well. Logic dictates this. That if you want to get to your father, or if you want to get to a prime minister, you have to go through his vizines, his secretaries. Yes, if you want to go to see a doctor, you have to go through the secretaries. Yes, they, if you want to go towards Rasulullah, then you have to go through the Ahlul Bayt. There's no choice. You have to go through the family of the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah wa ta'ala saying that, oh Ahlul Bayt, Let's turn our attention back to this verse. But, O oh, Ahlul Bayt, 
And this term Ahlul Bayt is not something that we have come up with. This is a term used in the Quran as well. The fourth point we learn from this verse. That oh Ahlul Bayt, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala wishes to remove all impurities from you. All impurities. Arbids and ulama present, the different types of alif lam. And one of the types of alif lam is jinsi. Meaning that all inclusive. Allah is trying to say that he has removed all impurities from the Ahlul Bayt. All forms of bad characteristics from the Ahlul Bayt. That the Ahlul Bayt are not those who are hungry for power. The Ahlul Bayt are not those who want status in the dunya. The Ahlul Bayt are not those who want to be known by the people. The Ahlul Bayt are those who work for the sake of Allah. The Ahlul Bayt are those who raise the flag of Islam. And the Ahlul Bayt are those who work for the mission of the Rasul. Allah is saying all of this. Allah is saying. All of this in this one ayat of the Quran. And the misdaq of this ayat, the subject matter of this ayat, yani the Ahlul Bayt, Imam Hussein is also from them as well. When this ayat was revealed, it was revealed in the house of Ummay Salama radiyallahu ta'ala and her. Mother of the believers. And you've got to remember this in mind as well. That all of the blessed wives of the Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they are also from the Ahlul Bayt. The children of Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, his three sons, Qasim, Ibrahim, Abdullah, they are also from the Ahlul Bayt. Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasallam's four daughters, Sayyida Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha, Sayyida Ruqayya radiallahu ta'ala anha, Sayyida Umm Kulthum radiallahu ta'ala anha, Sayyida Fatima to Zahra radiallahu ta'ala anha, they are also from the Ahlul Bayt as well. And Nabi Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said, that, oh Allah, I beseech you, I do the war to you. Again, Qadi Iyaz mentions this in his Ashifa. Bi ta'rifi hukuk al-Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Zaid bin Arkam is the Rawi. The Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam made the dua. That, oh Allah, I beseech you by the people of my house. I ask you through the people of my household. Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam has given you a misabak. Nabi Salatu Wasalam is teaching you and me that if you want your du'as to be accepted, then ask through the wasila of the Ahlul Bayt. And this is what Allah says in the Quran as well. وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Surah Al-Imran, verse number 103. Allah Ta'ala says that hold on firmly to the rope of Allah. Hold on to Habnullah and you will never ever be divided all Muslims. Imam Jafar al-Sadiq radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Imam Ahl al-Bayt. They said that Habnullah is the arm of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That Habnullah is the Ahl al-Bayt. That those who hold on to the Ahl al-Bayt, they will never ever be divided. Sahaba asked, Ya Rasulullah, Ya Habib Allah. Man ahlu baytihi, that who are your ahlul bayt? This is still the first part. Who are your ahlul bayt? Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam said, Alu alijin, the family of Ali, ahlul bayt. Wa alu ja'farin, the family of Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, he and his family are from the ahlul bayt. Wa alu aqilin, the elder brother of Sayyidina Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. His family and he, they are also from the Ahlul Bayt. And Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam said, Wa alun Abbasi, the family of Sayyidina Abbas, chacha of Nabi alayhi salatu wa sallam, they are also from the Ahlul Bayt as well. Four families, the family of Ali, the family of Ja'far, the family of Aqil, and the family of Sayyidina Abbas, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. These are the Ahlul Bayt. Lekin when this ayat was revealed, which ayat? Which one are we talking about? Here's the problem, eh? Sunniya lekin samjnena. We listen but we don't understand. Imam Sufyan al-Thawri, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, was a contemporary of Imam al-A'zam, Imam Abu Hanifa, Rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi. They gave sincere advice to the student of knowledge. They said the first step is that you listen. 
Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala gave you and me two ears. Two ears on our heads, two ears in our heart as well. Four ears. We didn't know that, did we? Four ears. Two ears of the head, two ears of the heart. The first step is what? That you listen. Second step, Sufyan Thawri is saying, Radhi Allahu Ta'ala, is that you understand. After you have listened to something, you understand this. We are now discussing the Ahlul Bayt. Your job and my job is to speak. Your job is to listen. And once you have listened, your job is to understand. And once you have understood, Sufyan al Thawri is saying that the next step is that you act upon that knowledge. We say we love the Ahlul Bayt, but we don't have any knowledge to support this claim. We don't have any ayat of the Quran to support this claim. Our youngsters don't know. Now we are talking about the maqam of the Ahlul Bayt. Listen carefully. Surah Al Ahzab, Surah 33, verse 33. When this ayat was revealed, Nabi Salatu was in the house of Umm Salama radiyallahu ta'ala anha. At that point, Nabi Salatu was he called Sayyidah Fatima to Zahra radiyallahu ta'ala anha. He called Imam Hassan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. He called Imam Hussein radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and he placed them under his Kali He placed them under his blessed cloak and Imam Ali radiyallahu ta'ala, Sayyiduna Ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, they were standing behind and at that point Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam made the dua that Allahumma haulai ahlu bayti fazhib anhum al-rijsa wa tahhirhum tathir. So no Allah, these are my ahlul bayt. Fatima is ahlul bayt. Ali is ahlul bayt. Hassan is ahlul bayt. Hussein is ahlul bayt. These are my ahlul bayt. Oh Allah, remove all impurities from them. What did Allah say in the Quran? That we have removed all impurities from the Ahlul Bayt. Now look, this is the dua of Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. That remove all impurities from the Ahlul Bayt. Hukam of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Dua of Nabi alayhi salatu was salam. Which tells you and me that the Ahlul Bayt are pure. That the Ahlul Bayt are clean. And you only look those things which are pure and clean. This is where I started, wasn't it? That the sign of a love, the sign of the love of the Rasul is love of the Ahlul Bayt. And you only love something when it is pure, when it is clean. Yes. And remember this, a point of Aqeedah, that the dawa of a Nabi is never rejected. A dawa of a Nabi of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, and bil khusus the dawa of Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam is never rejected. Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam is doing this dua that, oh Allah, purify my ahlul. And as I was saying, the misdaq, the subject matter of this verse is Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala. Imam Hussein, yes, Ajkal people said that Imam Hussein unfortunately went on false pretenses. That it was a political battle. Correct me if I'm wrong. That Imam Hussein was hungry for power. This is what they say, Astaghfirullah. That Imam Hussein wanted leadership, he wanted Khilafat. Those people who are, have books towards the Ahlul Bayt and Bi Khusus have books towards Imam Hussein. This is what they say. These people have rejected the ayat of the Quran. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says what? That we have purified the Ahlul Bayt from all impurities. Yes. Which means that Imam Hussein has been purified from all impurities. And Imam Hussein has no love for the dunya. Why would he have love for the dunya? When Nabi Salatu Islam has already given him leadership of Jannah. That Hassan is the leader of Jannah and the youth of Jannah. And Hussein is also the leader of the youth of Jannah. And why did Imam Hussein want leadership of this dunya? When Nabi Salatu Islam has already given him leadership of Jannah. Nabi Salatu Wasalam said that Imam Hussein is from me and I am from Hussein. That whoever loves Hussein loves me. And whoever loves me, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala loves him. And why would Imam Hussein want leadership? Why would Imam Hussein want the dunya? 
when he has been given the keys of Jannatul Firdaus. Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala who has been purified by Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. All bad characteristics, all of this hasad and kina which is in our lives. This was not in the misdaq of Imam Hussain radiallahu This was not in the vijdan of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala. Or Imam Hussain. I literally have three minutes now. That's the first part done. Lekin, I'll end this first part with one hadith of Nabi alayhi salatu We are talking about who? The Ahlul Bayt. Their maqam, their martaba. I have presented one ayat of the Quran, Surah Al Ahzab, Surah number 33, verse number 33. Lekin, there's no time to go through the rest of the ayat. Yes, the ayat of or the ayat of Mubahala. Yes. Or many, many other ayat highlighting the excellences of the Ahlul Bayt. Professor Saab has said 10.30. I'm waiting for somebody to walk out now. That's my ishara that you have had enough. Maybe Thakiya wa Tusay Thakiya wa Khana Misha Kei Thanda Yaw Riyah. Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam said, just to end on the maqam of the Ahlul Bayt. If I was to sit here one hour, two hour, three hour, the whole night, we will never do justice to the maqam of the Ahlul Bayt. The ilm of the Ahlul Bayt. Imam Jafar al-Sadiq was the teacher of who? Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi ta'ala And Imam Abu Hanifa said that if I did not spend two years with Jafar, I would not have been Nu'man bin Sa'id. I would not have been Abu Hanifa. This is who? Abu Hanifa is saying this, Rabbi of Allah. That Mazhab Hanafiya started with the Ahlul Bayt. Imam Muhammad Bakir was the teacher of Imam Abu Hanifa as well. Or they thought that the whole nasal of the Ahlul Bayt preserved Islam. The whole lineage of the Ahlul Bayt, they raised the flag of Islam. Look in history without going into too much detail. I'll just mention the names. You just listen very carefully. Pirani Pir. Shanshai Baghdad, Bi Sayyid Abdul Qadir Al Jilani, Hassani Wal Husseini. They serve the mission of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They serve the mission of Husayn, Radi Allah Ta'ala. Khwaja Khwaja Khan, Khwaja Sayyid Mu'in of the Jisti Ajmeri Sanjari. Naibul Rasul, Ata'un Nabi. That individual. The people just looked at him and converted to Islam. And he was responsible for nine million Hindus for accepting Islam. Khwajai Khwajai Khan was Hassani and Husseini as well. Khwajai Khwajai Khan, Mehbub-e Ilahi, Sultanul Awliya, Khwajai Sayyid Nizamuddin Awliya, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala Alayhi. And these people were those who were from the Ahlul Bayt. They were from the Garana of Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam. They are from the household of Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam. And they are those individuals who took the responsibility of raising the flag of Islam. Just as Imam Hussein raised the flag of Islam at Karbala, these great individuals and many, many more, Huzur Dat Ali Hujwari, they were Sayyid as well. Hassani or Huzaini Huzur, right? Huzur Dat Ali Hujwari, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, they were Sayyid as well. Peer Mayor Ali Shah Sahib, Peer Sayyid Mayor Ali Shah Sahib, Rahmatullahi Ta'ala, they were Sayyid as well. And you can talk about these great A'imma who were all from the Ahlul Bayt. Imam Musa Qazim from the Ahlul Bayt. Imam Muhammad Baqir from the Ahlul Bayt. Imam Zainul Abideen from the Ahlul Bayt. Imam Jafar al-Sadiq from the Ahlul Bayt. Imam Hassan from the Ahlul Bayt. Imam Hussein from the Ahlul Bayt. And each and every one of them, they had the mission of the Rasul, and they had the mission of Hussein, and they raised the flag of Islam. They fulfilled their duty. And we have Islam today because of the Ahlul Bayt. Because of the household of Nabi Ali Salatu Islam. The sacrifices they made. Ul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. They were those people, yani they were those personalities, those great individuals from the Ahlul Bayt who gave their prayer for the sake of Allah who made their sacrifice for the sake of Allah, who gave their life for the sake of Islam, and who died upon Iman as well. And who did they do this for? Lillahi Rabbil Alameen. They did this for the Lord of all of the worlds. This is what Nabi did, and this is what the Ahlul Bayt did as well. 
Jabiri Salatu Wasalam, just to end upon this first part. Jabiri Salatu Wasalam said, Ma'rifatu Ali Muhammadin Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Bara'atum Minan Naam. And those of you who recognize the maqam of the Ahlul Bayt, those of you who appreciate and who honor the status and the rank and the maqam of the Ahlul Bayt, Jabiri Salatu Wasalam said, those who do this, they will be free from the fires of Jahannam. That the flames of Jahannam will not touch their body. That their jisr will not be touched by the flames of Jahannam. Because they have honored and they have respect and recognized the Ahlul. Nabi Ali Salatu Wasalam continued, وَهُبُّ آلِ مُحَمَّدٍ Aye, aye, aye. وَهُبُّ آلِ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ جَوَازٌ عَلَى السِّرَاطِ Those of you who love the Ahlul Bayt, those of you who have devotion towards the Ahlul Bayt, those of you who are sincere towards the Ahlul Bayt, and towards the mission of the Ahlul Bayt, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said, those of you who do this, your crossing the pul sirat will be made easy for you. And in the pul sirat, which is sharper than a sword, which is thinner than an eyelash, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam is giving you this certificate that if you load the Ahlul Bayt, you will cross the pul sirat with ease. You will have no difficulty. And Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam ended by saying, Wal vilayatu li Ali Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amanun min al-azhaab. Those of you who have friendship with the Ahlul Bayt, those of you who have rifaqat with the Ahlul Bayt, those of you who keep company with the Ahlul Bayt, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam is saying that you will be saved from the punishment of Allah Tabarak. Because of you having a nisbat with the Ahlul Bayt, Allah will not punish you. Because of you loving the Ahlul Bayt, you will cross the full sirat with ease. And because you recognize in the maqam and martaba, the rank and the honor and the status of the Ahlul Bayt, Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala will not allow the flames of Jahannam to touch you. This is who the Ahlul Bayt is. And this is just one juz. Hussein is from the Ahlul Bayt. Imam Hussein is from the Ahlul Bayt. Imam Hussein had no love for the dunya. Imam Hussein had no desire for leadership. Imam Hussein didn't risk his life and didn't take his family with him in order to attain Khilaf. Rather, Imam Hussein went to Karbala in order to protect and save the deen of his grandfather, Rasulullah. Put the love of the Ahlul Bayt into our hearts. Mark you have this responsibility. Yes. Yes. And if you can't do this, then send it then people to us. Send your children to us. We will teach them. Send your children to Professor Saab. He will teach them. If you can't do this, if you feel that this is a burden for you, then send your children to us. We will open, we will welcome them with open arms. And we will give them the love of the Ahlul Bayt. I end with one last mark. Karbala has happened. Karbala took place 61 years after Hijrah, on the 10th of Muharram. Imam Hussein and his family, Ridwanullahi Ta'ala alayhim ajma'een, each and every one of them gave their life in the sake of Islam. And there was around 70 members of his family who one by one gave their life for the sake of Islam. Bear this in mind. There were some survivors, i.e. Sayyidah Zainab radiyallahu ta'ala anha, and Sayyidina Zayn al-Abideen radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Yazid did what? He ordered Ibn Ziyad to behead Imam Hussain. Astaghfirullah. And to bring the head, the blessed head, that same head that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa kissed. That same head that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa put his hand over. Yazid ordered Ibn Ziyad and the army of Yazid to behead Imam Hussein and to bring Imam Hussein's head from Kufa. Karbala is Nayyira, Kufa. Yes. To bring it from Karbala all the way to Damascus. And this caravan is going all the way to Damascus. Who's in this caravan? Sayyidah Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha. Imam Zainul Abidin radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And a few survivors from Karbala. Yes. The head of Imam Hussein is on a spike. It's being escorted all the way to Damascus. The army of Yazid is escorting the survivors of Karbala to Damascus, Syria. Yes. They get to Damascus. <coughs> People didn't know. Yes. There was no Facebook then, no Twitter, no internet. 
Nobody knew what had happened at Karbala. Nobody knew the blood which has been shed. So everybody's on their rooftops. What's going on? Who is this caravan? Whose are these heads? 